In the 10 to 20 lakh space, most of the excitement in recent times has been in the SUV segment because that's what the customer wants. But the sedan segment continues to hold its own. In recent times, we've seen new launches from Volkswagen and Skoda in the form of the Virtus and Slavia. And we recently saw the updated Honda City as well. And now Hyundai is ready to add excitement to the segment with the launch of the all new Verna. Now this new generation Verna promises exciting looks, exhilarating performance, loads of space, loads of features, all in a very premium package. But that's all on paper. What's it like in the real world? Well, that's what we're here to find out. That's what we'll talk about in our review. But before we move ahead, do remember to subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon so that you get notified every time new content goes up on Auto Today. In the case of the new Verna, a lot of the sedan's appeal lies in the way it has been styled. It is quite eye-catching with sharp cuts and creases and that low-set nose with the LED DRL strip. The white grille, which blends seamlessly with the LED headlamps, helps further accentuate the car's width. Over to the side, the Verna exhibits a fastback profile rather than a traditional three-box sedan shape and one can also notice the sporty, slightly tip-forward stance. The rear too has plenty going on with the intricately detailed LED tail lamps that stretch across the length of the boot and lower down, the Verna gets parametric design detailing similar to what we've seen on the new Tucson. Compared to the older Verna, the new one is 95mm longer and 36mm wider and the wheelbase has gone up by 70mm. There are subtle styling differences between the 1.5 naturally aspirated variant seen here in grey and the 1.5 turbo variant, the one in red. The turbo variant gets an additional horizontal slat just above the number plate and also comes with sportier all-black alloy wheels and red brake calipers. The turbo variant of the Verna gets a very sporty all-black interior colour scheme with these red highlights. Very sporty and it looks uh, pretty elegant and not overdone actually because sometimes manufacturers can go overboard and just, you know, this, these red highlights need to be used with restraint but at the same time it looks very nice, it looks very sporty like I said and uh, first thing that meets your eye is the steering, twin spoke steering so it's nothing here and uh, it's nice to hold, it's leather wrapped again red stitching for that sporty nature of the car to suit the sporty nature of the car but the main talking point is this dual screen setup so you get a 10.25 inch infotainment touchscreen and you get a fully digital instrument cluster as well this instrument cluster it's very familiar in terms of its layout uh, like we've seen in other Hyundai products and uh, it changes color basis the drive mode you selected so if you go into sport mode it's red if you go into eco it's a shade of blue green whatever and in normal it's all blue and along with the change in the highlights of the instrument cluster the interior ambient lighting also changes color so like I said with sport mode you get a red highlight and same is the case with eco and normal to match the color scheme of the instrument cluster down below you've got the controls for your automatic aircon uh, these are touch sensitive this panel here and the cool thing about this is that at the press of a button the controls change so if you want controls for your aircon you've got them here and you can press this button and you can select controls for your infotainment your maps etc and this is a single zone automatic climate control but the good thing about this is the uh, interesting feature is that auto also comes with three levels now three levels means that you can select an auto setting with a higher intensity so that you know you get the cooling the temperature down of the cabin much quicker down below are controls for ventilated seats and that's something we've seen a lot of Hyundai cars but what the Verna also gets are heated seats so you get controls for that here down below you've got a USB port to pair your phone with Android Auto, Apple CarPlay or charge your phone there's a USB type C charger and a 12 volt socket very standard stuff right below that is your space for wireless charging and uh, unlike the older Verna if you're familiar with the older Verna they added the wireless charging dock uh, with the facelift but the problem was that the space was not really big enough for bigger phones especially the newer ones that are coming in but that has been rectified because there's a much larger space here and phones of all sizes can fit easily this is the automatic variant of the turbo version and uh, what that means is that this central area is slightly different compared to the manual version 
So the manual version gets a physical handbrake, this gets an electronic parking brake and because of that to accommodate that and the auto hold function they've rejigged this specific area for the cup holders so you get one fixed cup holder and this other cubby hole which can turn into a cup holder at the push of a button so that's very convenient and very smart and under the armrest there is a space for storage. The Verna gets a long list of features including an 8 speaker Bose audio setup, an auto dimming IRVM, blue link connectivity, electrically adjustable driver's seat to name a few. The variant with the 1.5 naturally aspirated petrol motor gets a black and beige interior theme. Besides that, there aren't any differences in terms of features or comfort. If you've seen reviews of the older Verna or if you've owned the car or if you've ever sat in it, you'd know that a common complaint with that car was the lack of rear seat space. Well, I'm very happy to report that with the all new Verna, that issue has been addressed and addressed rather well. As you can see, I've got loads of space. This seat is adjusted to my driving position, my height is 5'8 for reference. And as you can see, I've got loads of knee room, there's plenty of leg room as well, there's space underneath the front seat for me to stretch my legs out. The seat back is very comfortable, the seat scob is also great, under thigh support is also very good for an average sized individual and headroom is decent as well, actually more than decent for again average size individuals. If you're taller, if you're more than six foot tall, then you might be closer to the roof, but they scoop this part out, so headroom is not an issue in the rear seat of the Verna either. All in all, this is a really good place to be, very spacious, feels airy, feels roomy, and Verna is now finally a car that can be used as a chauffeur-driven vehicle as well. In terms of features and amenities, you get this rear sun blind, which you can just pop down. There's a rear center armrest as well with twin cup holders. There are two USB-C charging ports and a slot to place your phone maybe or anything else you want to place and you've got rear AC vents as well. So all in all, the Verna with the updated version, the new gen Verna, the rear seat is a great place to be. Boot space compared to the older car has gone up by 48 litres to 528 litres and the boot also has a wider opening. Hyundai is offering the all-new Verna with two engine options. There's a 1.5-litre naturally aspirated petrol engine with 115 bhp of peak power. And the other one is the more exciting one. That's a 1.5-litre turbocharged petrol engine with 160 bhp of maximum power. And that's the one I'm driving right now. And as the number suggests, it is very quick. Hyundai claims a 0 to 100 kmph time of 8.1 seconds and that's pretty much the segment benchmark right now. The DCT is fairly responsive. It does the job of Shifting as per your requirements pretty well, uh, especially in sport mode, it's quick, it holds on to the revs for longer compared to normal or eco mode and uh, no complaints on that front. Um, as an overall package, it is very exciting, very quick and the enthusiast in you will be very happy with the Hyundai Verna 1.5 Turbo, giving you the comfort you want while driving in the city over broken roads, good roads, whatever it is that you encounter, your daily commutes. You'll be very comfortable driving the car, the steering is light enough, the suspension is comfortable enough and at higher speeds or if you feel like driving the car enthusiastically, if you feel like pushing it a little more, the Verna doesn't disappoint in that sense either. The variant with the 1.5 litre naturally aspirated petrol engine with 115 bhp is obviously not as quick or exciting as the 1.5 turbo, but performance is adequate from the perspective of most average car buyers. It's available with either a 6-speed manual or an automatic transmission in the form of an IVT. Driving within the city, it never felt underpowered and in fact, this variant makes a lot of sense for buyers who are looking for a sedan to be chauffeured around in. From a driver's point of view, you get three driving modes. There's Sport, which I just engaged right now and like the name suggests, throttle responses change, the gearbox changes its character, holds on to gears far longer, shifts down much quicker. There's Eco which again as the name suggests will help you maximize fuel efficiency and there's Normal which is basically a balance between the two. And besides that, for a driver you also get level 2 ADAS, Hyundai Smart Sense level 2 ADAS. What that means is you get a whole host of features, you get forward collision warning, collision avoidance assist, you get blind spot monitoring, you also get those uh, features like safe exit warning and 
when you're reversing out of a parking spot and there's a vehicle approaching, the car will alert you. If you're trying to open the door while the car is parked and if there's a vehicle approaching from behind, again, the car will alert you. All those are very handy. And the ADAS suite also brings with it adaptive cruise control, which basically means you can set a speed and you can set a distance which you want the car to maintain between you and the vehicle in front of you. So if the vehicle in front of you slows down, the car will automatically slow down and then build up speed to whatever you've set as your cruising speed. All those are very handy, again, not very common in this segment and uh, they just add to the overall appeal of the Verna. If, if I were to find faults in the Verna, um, it's not a fault per se, but the design can be polarizing. Uh, it's not a please all design like the last one was. This one is way more striking, way more edgy and it can divide opinion. But again, when the Creta was launched, the current Creta was launched, people did say that, you know, it looks odd, it's not a very good looking car, etc, etc. But look at where we are right now. The Creta is the best seller in the segment and there's a huge waiting period. So of course, obviously people have accepted it. And again, with the Verna, it'll turn heads. It's just really um, striking to look at. I won't try to put words into your mouth and um, try to influence your opinion. That's for you to decide if you like the car or not. But I think it looks really good, very striking, very eye-catching. In terms of features, there's plenty. There's so much in this car. It's properly loaded with features. But there are a few things that I would have preferred Hyundai would have added, like the electrically adjustable seats. Four and a half movement recline, it's electric, but seat height adjust is manual. The 1.5 naturally aspirated petrol Verna gets the ADAS package only in the automatic variant and misses out on adaptive cruise control. In fact, this particular feature is restricted only to the 7-speed DCT variant of the 1.5 turbo Verna. Lack of wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay is another big miss in my books. Uh, even cars like the Alcazar Kata, even they don't get that in the top-of-the-line variants and that's something that should have been added, I think, uh, especially for a car costing as much. Maybe it will come on at a later stage, we don't know that yet, but yeah. Those are a couple of features that I wish Hyundai had addressed. Otherwise, in terms of features, the car basically sets a benchmark because you get more than what a lot of rivals in the segment offer. And in that sense, Verna is a complete package. If you want a sedan, if you want a good looking sedan, if you want a sedan that's exciting to drive, that has space, that has features, the Hyundai Verna is the one for you. Price between Rs 10.90 lakh and Rs 17.38 lakh ex showroom, the Verna costs significantly more than the model it replaces. But it has also grown in size, has more features, improved performance and enhanced safety and essentially sits half a segment above its predecessor. Keeping all these aspects in mind, we feel the Verna is priced competitively, more so when compared with its chief rivals Honda City, Volkswagen Virtus and Skoda Slavia. What do you think of the new generation Hyundai Verna? Feel free to share your opinions in the comment section below and don't forget to share and subscribe.